watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Happening now at 6, covering the entire DMV. Attempted ATM robbery? A driver smashes into a local pharmacy, but witnesses told police about the suspects. And Baltimore Bridge removal work now underway to clear the Charm City's busy port and the money raised to support the victims' families. And we're starting off the weekend on a fairly dry note. However, some showers are moving into the area, and some of you are seeing some rain as we speak. We'll show you the latest radar and give you the forecast for tonight and Easter Sunday coming up. Plus, that arena deal now done. What's next for the Virginia neighborhood that won't welcome the Capitals and Wizards after D.C. won to keep the teams in town? Good evening. Happy Saturday, everyone. Thank you for joining us for D.C. News Now at 6. I'm Ben Dennis. We begin to the district. Police say that one person is dead. Five more hurt after a crash in northeast last night. Officials say it happened on I-295 near Nanny Helen Burroughs Avenue. According to witnesses, a pickup truck was speeding when it crashed into another car. Police say the truck drove into the right shoulder of the road and hit a guardrail before losing control. The truck then went over a cement wall, hit another car before bursting into flames. The driver of the truck was trapped inside and died on scene. The passenger was transported to the hospital in critical condition. Another car driving by also hit some debris and crashed. Four people in that car were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Staying in D.C., police responded to an attempted robbery at a CVS after a van drove through its security gates in Northeast. We're told this happened around 3 o'clock this morning on 12th Street. Security cameras caught suspects trying to force their way into the store by backing a white van through the security gate, destroying it. Police say the machine was damaged, but no money appeared to be missing. One of the suspects left the scene in that white van and another was picked up by a third person driving a dark colored sedan. An investigation is ongoing. And in Virginia, a man is in custody after a domestic related fatal shooting that happened overnight in Mosby Woods. Officials say it happened around 830 on Vera Lane. The suspect's wife told police her husband, Wasudin Kuraishi, threatened her and her kids and that he may have had a weapon. Following that report, officers started searching the area and found Mohammed Zikria of Fairfax inside of a car on Willow Crescent Drive with multiple gunshot wounds. He later died on scene. Kuraishi is now facing multiple charges, including second degree murder. And classes will resume Monday for students across D.C., but not necessarily the case for one student. That's after several students attacked him Thursday in a campus stairwell. According to the mother of Tyler Corbett, her son is fine physically, but emotionally she's still waiting to see if there are any lingering effects of what happened. Our Dave Laval will join us in a few minutes with more. And continuing coverage of Baltimore's tragic bridge collapse, we have just learned that crews are starting to remove tons of steel to reopen the busy port of Baltimore. It's been four days since a container ship rammed into the key bridge, causing it to collapse. The U.S. Navy is providing four heavy lift cranes to help with cleanup. You can see them there. The cranes can lift about 1,000 tons at a time. Officials say that demolition crews are cutting the top of the fallen bridge and are working to avoid impacts to an underwater pipeline there. And Governor Westmore says that his focus is on a number of areas right now. Of course, it started with recovery, clearing the channel to open the port, and the folks impacting, the folks who are impacted, including the families of those who are lost, plus rebuilding the bridge. Now, recovery operations were suspended because of unsafe water conditions. Officials say that the closure of the port of Baltimore will have major impacts on both Maryland and the nation's economy. The big part, and one of the challenges, is that the key bridge, which sits on top of the vessel right now, that that weight is somewhere between three and 4,000 tons. So our team needs to cut that trust into sections in a safe, in a responsible, and in an efficient way before it can lift those pieces out of the water. The cost and timeline to rebuild, that's not known. Some experts say it could be anywhere from 18 months to several years to rebuild and could cost around $400 million. And President Biden told reporters that he will be visiting Baltimore this week. He says the federal government will foot the bill to rebuild, starting with $60 million in federal relief. Over to weather now. Take a look at this video. You can see large waves pummeling the coast there in central. This is California. A storm system passing over the area yesterday, bringing high winds and rain to the region. Officials say that thunderstorms are expected in the area through tonight. Over to forecast with meteorologist Scott Sumner. Time is 6.04. Scott, you can certainly take a look at those uh, waves pummeling the coast there, but um, what's happening with our forecast here in the DMV? Yeah, I'm just watching the radar right now to see what's going on. Let's take a look at that radar here and pop that up on the screen. So. 
you can see basically what we have here in the district. As you note, uh, we are looking at nothing going on right now. However, just off to the north, there are some showers across the region, and those showers, well, they could potentially clip parts of uh, northeastern D.C. As you see here, again, we do have uh, some of that light rain and even pockets of heavier rain indicated by the yellow heading towards Berryville here around uh, three, uh, along Highway 340. And you notice all of this continue to move from a west to easterly path across the area. We'll widen out the view, just put a still shot on that so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's put this into motion here over the last couple of hours, and you can see again, it's moving pretty much from west to east. So where is it going to go here between now and the next hour? Again, we could have some rain showers starting to move in across the district, certainly into Fairfax County between now and 705. So if you're stepping outside this evening and Roslyn, yeah, have that umbrella handy just in case you could have some light rain right now, just being classified as mostly cloudy skies with a temperature of 67 degrees. But you'll see those numbers fall out of the 60s and getting into the 50s here by around that midnight hour and then potentially down to 50 around 6 o'clock in the morning. I'll have your Easter forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Back Looking forward to, to it. Thank you, Scott. Folks are still enjoying the cherry blossoms in D.C. Folks in the district celebrating Blue Maru this afternoon. That festival spread across the entire wharf featuring several stages, live music, crafts for kids, karaoke, and movie screenings, plus blossom martinis and a beauty bar. The event offers the honors the cherry blossoms that blanken the city's landscape, of course, as their peak bloom is about to end. The event will be capped off later tonight with a fireworks show at 8.30. Also in the district, the National Cherry Blossom Festival hosting its annual Blossom Kite Festival today, featuring a Colors of the Wind themed kite making competition. Open to amateurs, enthusiasts alike, split into two divisions between kids and adults. Children can compete for first, second, and third place awards. Award categories for adult kites include best in show, greatest visual appeal, best craftsmanship, and more. In Virginia, Governor Glenn Youngkin has just vetoed a bill that would have legalized and established recreational marijuana market. He says that it would endanger Virginians. Virginia legalized cannabis back in 2021, meaning people 21 and older may buy it at dispensaries through the state's medical marijuana program. After the veto, Virginians won't be allowed to buy it for commercial use. The bill would have allowed large retail cannabis sales to start in May of 2025. In a statement, Governor Yonker said in part, quote, states following this path have seen adverse effects on children's and adolescents' health and safety, increased gang activity and violent crime. A group that pushes for legislation and helps those impacted by prohibition says having an unregulated black market creates a more dangerous environment in Virginia. Not a total surprise, but that does not uh, make our disappointment any less. The list that he gave is um, a long list of misinformation, to be very honest, and that there is a lot of research that shows that regulated and tested marijuana will create a safer environment for all people, including our youth. Without two-thirds majority in Virginia's assembly, Democrats cannot override Youngkin's veto. The group says it's not giving up and will renew their efforts when a new governor takes office in 2026. And with cannabis retail sales and the minimum wage hike off the table, one Republican Virginia lawmaker wants to start over on the state budget. Our Haley Milan joins us in the studio with more. Governor Glenn Youngkin has yet to sign the Virginia budget passed with bipartisan support back in March. And after the governor vetoed a number of bills and failed to get the monumental arena deal done, at least one Republican lawmaker in Virginia is suggesting a budget do-over. State Senator Glenn Sturavant posted on X that it's time to get serious for a budget for Virginia, despite the General Assembly passing the budget with bipartisan support already. Youngkin vetoed a number of bills addressing Democrats' priorities on cannabis sales and gun control. And following the Francis Scott Key bridge collapse in Baltimore, Sturdivant wrote that the budget priority now must be the Port of Virginia. The hub will see much more activity as the Port of Baltimore is now inaccessible. The state senator suggested a special session to create a new budget. The governor does have line item veto power and can add funding through amendments. Now, Youngkin has said he won't sign a budget that includes tax hikes as Republicans project that the proposed budget could would add $2.6 billion a year in taxpayer burden. The new two-year budget is set to take effect when the fiscal year begins on July 1st. For DC News Now, I'm Haley Mylon.